across the known world and welcome back to another exciting episode of The Crown Between Two Roses. I'm Countess Beatrice and tonight we have with us Duchess Anglin, Baroness Lillian and Baron Gilchrist. Welcome. Um, I'd like to kick off tonight uh, with our acknowledgement. So, good nobles, we come here together in a spirit of fellowship, deepening of our skills, sharing of our knowledge and our shared interest in two in the search to find truth through experimental archaeology and historical inquiry. It is in this context that I, Duchess Anglin, on behalf of my kingdom, acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands upon which we gather. We recognize their continuing connection to land and culture, and we pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and the elders from other communities who may be here today. So thanks for joining us. It's very exciting to have a, have a chat um, with you guys. I've spent a bunch of years up in Mordenvale and I have a lot of fond memories so hopefully we get to hear some some fun stories um to kick things off can you tell both can you both tell us how you found out about the SCA and what prompted you to first join in you can go like I'll start um I first heard about the SCA in 1983 um through role playing and Andenard for some time uh, discovered Morden Vale in 1984, went to where they were supposed to meet at 1.30 on a Sunday afternoon, was there three Sundays in a row, no one turned up, went off and did other things and then a couple, two years later um, I was role playing weekly, if not more often, with a certain fellow that you might all have heard of, um, His Grace, Duke Elfin Ramona. <laughs> not that he was that at the time. <laughs> um, and he'd already started playing in the SCA and we, I started going from May the 3rd, 1986. Yeah. Uh, just over, just under 35 years in the SCA. Pretty cool. Did you ever find out why they weren't at the, the place that they because, said they were going um, to? SCA time. <laughs> that's, that's kind of what I guessed. <laughs> and and being, being someone who's worked for nearly 40 years in the rail industry, I'm an on-time person. <laughs> and so... Yeah, it it happened eventually, and I've been part of Morden Vale since May '86. Um, apart from the brief period of time when I was part of the now non-existent Shire of Linarian, okay, um, which was the Lake Macquarie Shire after a small political run um, split, which we don't need to go into. Okay. Well, it seems to have resolved itself now, so that's It good. did, it did. I helped split it, I helped put it back together. <laughs> that's good, that's awesome. How about you, Lillian? Technically, I first heard about the SCA in 88. And I was just a young high school kid and my brother, now Angus McDougall, married to Aya, because people might know her better. Um, <laughs> Him and one of his mates went to a, a feast and told me all about it. In fact, they were telling me all about it. the song where Gunrick hit his wench with a spoon, <laughs> which was a song that started up because Lord Vale's like that. Because Gunrick hit his wife with a spoon, a song started out about Gunrick hitting his wench with a spoon. And I went, What about your widows? <laughs> <laughs> was 16 it did not interest me at all and then many many years later in just pre-2000 um angus started to to go again and tell me all about it and as a disclaimer let's just get this out i love Hamble. he's a wonderful person before i go there <laughs> but he kept trying to get me to go to this thing and then one night um there was a, a tv show called rove and it came on and Hamble was on the TV show talking about his medieval group, the SCA, and 
I was still sort of a young party going person and listening to this going, he's, this is, this is the group you want me to go to? And they're like, no, 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 come on, there's so much more to it. And I was like, mm, I don't know. And so, yeah, it still took um, some more time until one of my friends at the time begged me to go to a festival to keep her company, and I did. And somehow after meeting some of the Morden Vale people like Yanni and Jack, I decided to still come back. <laughs> Impressive. Uh, that is amazing. Uh, so, did you meet in the SCA? Yes. Is there a story behind that? No, not really. <laughs> um, <laughs> Morton Vale. So we just, I think, went to some parties, same events, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, one of the girls from Queensland, Rasheen, probably had a great to do a deal to do with us getting to know each other more because. Yeah. She came down to visit and she came down specifically in some ways to visit Brown, me, and Gilchrist. So, no. no. I think Rasheen likes to take credit for it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Knowing Rasheen, yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few things that we have across the. Um, the people that we've interviewed and there's been a wide variety of passions and interests. What are the interests that you guys have? Now or when we started? Both. Yeah. Now, now as well as when we started, um, my biggest interest was probably the social, even though they were a bunch of weirdos. Some of them were all right, and <laughs> they, they threw, threw through some good parties. So it was socially good, and also, yeah, my friends at the time who who no longer play, but they were a big part of it, so it, it became a social thing. And in the beginning, it was that and the alcohol <laughs> and the fun. And... I was never really hugely interested in fighting or anything like that. But yeah, mostly it was the social side of it. As years went on, I got more interested in the arts and sciences side of it, certainly more interested in the service side of it. Um, but still, it's become a social thing. And people like me don't have friends outside the SEA because I really could be asked. It's just too much work. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Why? my interest and passion this may surprise you both is the administration of the game no <laughs> yeah. i as i said i joined in 1986 i took up my first um shire office because we were still a shire at the time in 1987. since then so that's what 24 years ago 34 years ago I've had about 12 months in total where I haven't held some form of office within the SCA, whether it be local, corporate, <laughs> um, in fact, corporate and local at the same time as I was both Baron of Morden Vale while being chair of SCA Limited, which is no longer possible under the constitution or the laws of Lockhart. <laughs> <laughs> and that law didn't change because of you, right? Uh, well, no, because Killick was the next chair and he was also Baron of Anyala at the same time. But yes, we'll yes, it probably was deemed that it was a little too much to be on the board as well as being um, a territorial um, Baron at the same time, which having done it, I concur. It wasn't my wisest move, but there were reasons why I chose to do it which once again were political, which might surprise people. <laughs> I have to say, I think the first time that you and I had a conversation, Girl Chris, there was definitely that political bent, uh, bent to it. And it was standing in a car park uh, at a Morden Vale event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've probably scared some people away in the past <laughs> because <laughs> politics is my passion and it doesn't matter whether it's, internal SCA or mundane politics. I love it. Um, and it's just, it's just me. 
And you're currently Senator of Water Vale, is that right? Currently, yes. Um, half, just over halfway through my term. So now I'm actually starting to put out feelers for a replacement. Um, so that um, the barony can go yeah, on. I will tell you, we've all been there and done that already. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's only had good people in that role, as far as I know. <laughs> This is this is actually my second go at being um, perennial senator. There you go. Is it has it been different this time to last time? Yes, because last time, two weeks before I officially st stood up, um, His Excellency and Her Excellency Ragnar and Tamara uh, Lucrezia announced they were stepping down. So <laughs> my my tenure as um, Senegal was four months and 10 days. Right. Because we were convinced by Bran and others to run for BNB of Mordenvale, a role neither of us aspired to. It took a lot of convincing for me and a deal. Yeah. Which means I made a deal with, with Bran at the time and we, made, we came to an agreement that, um, yes, I would, I would run. I didn't think we'd actually get it, but I'd be happy to run if he would take on Senegal as he'd been before. And he agreed and, and then, racked off to Queensland. Yeah, probably <laughs> yeah. moved, moved to St. Florian. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't really keep that end of the bargain? No. No, no but we got a little out of it, so. Yeah. That's very yeah. true. <laughs> Another little. <laughs> That's the train. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we obviously didn't mind being Baron and Baroness because we did do it for just short of seven years. <laughs> That's quite, um, a, quite a long tenure. Um, yeah. Really. I think most, I, most are, you know, three to four, but... <laughs> Part of the reason we did it, when when we started as BNB, it was a very collegiate group amongst um, the landeds in the kingdom. And we'd all noticed that the average tenure had been dropping close to two years. And so we agreed that we would, if possible, all try and increase the average back to the three to four years, um, which seems a comfortable time because because the baron and baroness are the only non-time limited officers in the kingdom a lot of the a lot of the corporate and cultural knowledge is actually held by the landers um so it gives it gives continuity in particular within the barony having yeah. more than two year terms for the um landers and for those that don't understand it's a minimum two year term yeah yes it's if you've been there and done that and you're doing it again firstly you're not <laughs> but then you do have you have a bit a bit more knowledge a bit more experience um but otherwise i've always said to people you've got a year before you settle in and mm. know what you want to do and know how you're doing it there are there are people that have stood up as land and B&Bs that had everything planned out and knew exactly what they wanted to do beforehand and could have, you know, landed running or landed and been completely wrong. But, you know, generally if you're just thrown into it or throw yourself into it, um, yeah, I think, you know, you've got 12 months to get your feelers and your feelings and then you've got 12 months of, it, it, it's almost like, you know, the second year is your first year. So two years is, is almost really a minimum, otherwise you're not experiencing it and preferably more than two years for you to, to have an impact or, or whatever. Six to seven years is, is excessive. But I think it was like, I think we were kind of a stench that they just had some trouble washing <laughs> off. <laughs> we, in, in the kingdom, we're certainly not the longest. The longest running were Ashlyn and Tovey, who were the founding Baroness and Baron of um, Eelgard, who ran for 128 months. 
Wow. In and normal rolling. times, how many years is that? Over 10. Thank almost, you. almost, almost 11 years. Wow. And Rowan ran for almost 10 years as the sole baroness of um, Rowany. Yeah. Mind you, she did have some time off because she did reign as princess twice during her tenure. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm not sure that's time off though. <laughs> but also <laughs> expectation of our leadership has quite changed in the, in the almost 40 years that I've played in the SCA where I remember, I remember when um, Angie was Lockhart Senatorial, she was able to put in Pegasus, do not contact me after 9.30 p.m. Eastern. And people followed that. <laughs> Whereas with the modern t communications that we have, in the periods of time when I've acted up as Kingdom Senatorial, where you haven't, if you haven't responded to particular people's emails within 30 or 40 minutes, you get the follow-up email. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and with social media now, there's, yeah. there's almost this expectation of instant responses. You know, people have yeah. real life jobs, people have real life families and, and mm -hmm. everything. It's just, you, you can't expect that. I mean, if there's an emergency situation, different story, but you're not going to be contacting someone by Facebook in an emergency. <laughs> I hope not, at least. Um, yeah, that that expectation I think needs to to shift. We're in, we're a volunteer organisation. Pretty much everybody has work to do, as well as mm. um, families. And this is a hobby. It's meant to be fun. So, yeah, just calm down. <laughs> it is. It is one of the reasons why I didn't throw my hat in the ring this time round um, for Lockhart Senatorial because I work a seven day roster. I work 24 hours a day. So there, there are weeks where I'm working night shift where I'm no good to anyone. <laughs> I'm hardly good at work <laughs> because I'm in f fatigue for the entire week that I'm on night shift. Because I don't sleep well because I'm a morning person and going to bed at quarter past six in the morning. <laughs> I don't sleep so well. <laughs> We have a, a comment from, from the other Lil saying um, you were day and night managers of Morton Vale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, I was particularly at festival or spring war. Most of spring war, yeah. I was the, I was the day person. So, yeah, Gilkos always got up before me and did a lot of, so it, it was like, yeah, he was a baron during the day and I was there during the night. So in some ways we were almost sometimes a 24 hour Baron and Baroness, because, you know, I might stumble for bed around about the time that he'd get up. <laughs> <laughs> Generally smelling strongly of some form of alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Being fundamentally these days a non-drinker. <laughs> but yes, it was it was a common thing, um, particularly Morden Bell. People would, would call us the day and night manager. Yeah. That's I think I had a good job. I just drank a lot. And unfortunately, sometimes I'd still have to get up early in the morning. And um, and the other Lil is, is someone who's probably experienced this a lot where you get up and you crawl to the barbecue that runs running <laughs> and you hold the horn full of cider and you look on the barbecue and run ask you how you're doing because you do like you're going okay and you go I'm fine and then he goes you're still drunk and you go <laughs> oh is this going to be terrible later <laughs> but yeah it, it happened occasionally and and yeah he was a wonderful wonderful man who just kept pouring cider down your throat to keep you up while you till you were done yeah <laughs> you know what though like being a um, a customer I guess at the uh, at the the pointy hats breakfast barbecue um, like it's, it was such a, it's like it's such a nice thing to have those conversations in the morning and have, have, meet the people that are there if you you know if you're a bit have a bit of peer fear or whatever that's a great icebreaker to to meet all of the the pointy hats so it's, um, it's good that you did it. To be strictly honest it was a piece of social engineering 
um, we, we, we used to struggle to get people to do the breakfast service. So at one point, Brian, myself, and a few others decided, well, to cook on the barbecue, you need to be caught baron or higher. <laughs> and we've had people post us introducing that as soon as they get a court barony or some such title, going, I can now cook on the barbecue at Spring War. <laughs> they were they were an essential team though. They were um obviously Bran, Guy, Lil, B. Countess B was a big, a big person, big, big contributor to the to the barbecues at Spring War, to all the food at Spring War for quite some time. Yeah. Except and I wasn't I allowed to cook the eggs because I mangled the eggs and he would <laughs> always take me off them. Yeah, yeah, you would you could get taken off things if you didn't do the right job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not the I was not that cook bacon, but that's all. it. And yeah, because <laughs> everybody everybody can single-handedly crack an egg without breaking it, right? Like it's easy, you know. I do yeah. recall there was a spring war where we had um crown in attendance, as we, we often had, which is great. And the, the the Queen at the time, I, definitely Queen at the time, was very insistent that as Queen, she, she could cook on the barbecue in the morning because I she was Queen hat. and so she shall. Yes, I had a hat. <laughs> and then I did pass it off to my delegate um, who did not have a hat until later that afternoon. Thank you, Maka. <laughs> <laughs> So, Lil, one of one of the things that um, many of us have been able to enjoy is your absolute generosity um, and giving in the SCA. Like, personally, I've been the recipient of a couple of wonderful things that you've hand stitched, and like, totally out of the blue. I didn't expect um, the, that you've given that to us, and um, I know that you've done a lot of things for a lot of other people. Uh, so what what is it that drives you to learn and to create um, mostly to to pass on to others? Uh, it's it's a thing I learnt from from my brother Angus, um, and anyone who has children will be able to understand this, or possibly be horrified by it. So when your children are young, they draw these pictures. You put them on your fridge regularly. You know, you see parents with their the pictures on their fridge. And they're whatever the child has drawn and they take great pride in it. And um, as my brother explained to my mother when he was quite young in primary school, I believe, and she put one of these beautiful pictures up on the fridge and he quite loudly told me that, see, what happens is we draw this and we go, what am I going to do with this crap? All right, mum on it. And there you go. And see, that's possibly what happens to me. I make something and I go, oh, my God, I'll just give it to you. <laughs> no, I, don't know. Um, I think it's like a service thing for me. If <clears throat> someone, I look at someone and go, you know, you really need one of these or this will look right or someone says that they like something and so I just go and do it. I don't know. I honestly can't tell you apart from, you know, the rest of me in my head will probably keep me up at night going, you know what, you should make one of these for England. And I go, can you, can you, can, you, can I go to sleep? They go, no, 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 no. <laughs> let's get up now and do this. So it's probably them more than me that influenced me. But yeah, I honestly, yeah, I just, I don't see myself as a generous person or a giving person, but oh, wow. it, it, it just happens. <laughs> and and what, what also amazes me is her complete disparaging of her skills. They appreciate it. <laughs> See? They are not. Oh, my God. No, they are not. Um, when, when, when I was elevated to the Order of the Pelican, um, I wanted a Waffen Rock. We spent, well, I spent a stupid amount of money on silk for it. The hem of my Waffen Rock is 600 inches. Wow. It's not hand sewn. <laughs> Near enough. Wow. <laughs> so, and it, 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 it's a splendid thing. Um, 
I haven't had the courage since since losing my weight to try it on to see how much it doesn't fit me. <laughs> um, because I love it. She's awesome at, at things, but she won't admit it. Some things I am. I think it's hard, like most people would know when you make something, you can see all the bits that went wrong. You yes. can see that that paint line that's really squiggly and someone else might not, but to me it looks massive. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I totally understand. Having received some of your your items, absolutely. The big wobbly um, lines in them. Yeah, yeah, all the wobbly lines. I You've pointed out all of the mistakes. So, you know, I don't I don't have to worry about that anymore. I don't have to go searching with magnifying glass for them. Yeah. Well, one one of the the what, um, gifts that you gave me was a little jewelry bag that was entirely hand stitched and embroidered. And inside that, there's another two little pouches to hang brooches on and to hang on the strings of beads. And it's all like hand finished. And there's the um, Viking wire weaving on it. And it's like, it's gorgeous. I don't think there's any errors in it or well, not errors, but any wobbly lines or anything. I just, I feel like it's a shame that it kind of, because it's a, a functional thing that kind of sits in your dressing room. And I, I'm sad I don't get to show it off and like, look at this thing. <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah, I was, um, I was very lucky that you did some ankle loom weaving for me when I, before I stepped up. So and I think it was one of, like, you'd only just started doing it. I think so, yeah. 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 And I've still got it. I love it. I wear it still. I just moved from wool to stuff that wasn't wool because I realised that when you do, like, 20 metres of braid out of wool and you're allergic to wool, it's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I do love how you learn things the hard way. The oh, way. yeah. Okay. you got to learn. you got to learn. <laughs> and we, we know that you've got some stories <laughs> behind that. Would you like to share a couple? Oh, which one in particular? Me learning my lessons. Like yeah. red stuff stays on the inside. Andrew Gilchrist tells me that all the time, but I, I don't like to adhere to that one. Um <laughs> Some Queen's Guard belt that you had from a particular countess who might be in the room. I was yeah. playing at home. The Queen's Guard belt had a, a ring that they attached to, and they were a baldric that went across your shoulder. And I'm a, a fidgety person. I have to have something to do with my hands. If I don't, I have to hold them. They have to be doing something. I can't keep them still. So yeah, when you're standing nice and still behind, there's a ring that you can fiddle with. And my hand may have slipped through it. And I may have had to stand there the entire court with my hand stuck in the baldric. <clears throat> and when court was over, I, I, I went up to, to Countess B and she was a little busy and I tried to be really quiet and, and you know, then I sort of just went and did it. <laughs> I think she laughed a lot before I she did. helped me. <laughs> <laughs> because, of course, it was only you. It would only be you that would get your hands stuck in the ring of the ball trick. It was amazing how easily it slipped in but didn't come out. Yeah. I believe we ended up in the kitchen with butter and... Yeah. No, that was the second point. time. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, how many times did she do it at <laughs> the uh, one event? <laughs> no, no, no. It was twice within about 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> we were standing outside and I was talking to someone and I just hear Macca going, not again. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine that Lil was like explaining to someone what happened and she would have gone, yeah, just like this. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that, that that came very close to happening. There were quite a few events afterwards where um, a certain Macca would I'd get a tap on the shoulder down a line of Queen's Guard and, and Barons and Baronesses' attendants and stuff, and someone had smacked me on the side and Macca would be way over there and they'd whisper in my ear, Macca said, get your head out of the ring. And I... <laughs> 
So he did keep an eye on me for a bit. He's a good boy. <laughs> okay. I have a lot of time for um, um, Andreas. Absolutely. Um, talking about, we, we were talking about your service and, and the offices and the roles that you have. You are also both the registrar for SCA Limited for Australia. Currently, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So how, how does that work? It's, um, Gilchrist's kind of deputy hasn't had yeah. to do anything. Yeah, I, he goes to the I, post office I and post posts the letters. And I buy supplies. <laughs> <laughs> Important role. Um, it, it is a very easy job. Um, it, it's not it's not time consuming. It's it's quite simple. There's very little. You know, every now and then something goes yes, a bit strange. The, the stamps and the stickers are lils. Um, yep. <laughs> addition to the envelopes. Yep. It's really just <laughs> laminating some cards, punching a few buttons and chucking a bunch of stickers on the back of an envelope. Um, but it's, it's, yeah, it's a very, it's, it's a very easy job. So it's nice to know, it's kind of a good feeling to know you've done something and it hasn't been that time consuming and it doesn't interfere with your life and yeah, I have to say I do remember that you took a photo of my membership card, the last one that you posted me and that you had to reprint it because you did bleed over my card. All <laughs> over it. The yep. only one I've bled all over. But, yes, yeah, so I discovered that lamination can be really sharp. Like paper cuts got nothing on a laminator cut. <laughs> so, yeah, as I tried to... Um, put Count SB's membership card inside the laminating pouch. It slid across my finger and oh, it was a lot of red stuff. Yeah. But that's that's quite common for me. I, I am, I'm no drakey, <laughs> but I aspire to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's said often in, like, in relation to injuries and accidents. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, or Jib may do a risk assessment as you know yeah. my risk deputy <laughs> on that. I think you need to get someone else to trial the role first to prove that it's perfectly safe as long as it's not in my hands or probably Jakey. <laughs> um, there's a story that's come up a, a couple of times uh, around the coordinated outfits for the coronation of Bran and Lilia. Do you want to tell us the story about how that came about? What was the inspiration? I, I don't know what first started it. I think it was a group of Mournvale people sitting around discussing, yes, we're going to go. Of course we're yeah. going to go. And, yeah, I think it just happened in a general conversation of a group of Mournvale people of, hey, we should wear something the same. We should wear plaid to support... <laughs> um, to support Bram because because he's ours um and then okay we should wear green and red plaid we were very well aware of the fact that that Bram was never overly fond of the green and red but that's that's not going to stop us so yeah it just became a yep we're going to go out and we're going to source as much green and red plaid as we can and send everyone to the coronation in in yeah matching matching garb so yeah I think I don't think there were many people. I don't think there was possibly anyone from Morden Vale that went that didn't have. Yeah. And, of course, wearing metres of um, plaid on that ridiculously hot day in Goulburn wasn't super fun, but it was awesome to be there to support two people whom I love dearly in their, um, in, in, in their coronation and to show our support as a barony behind um, Brian and Lil. And, and green, red, and gold plaid. That really actually isn't that nice. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of it. Does anyone need it? <laughs> you were um, sitting on the thrones as Baron and Baroness during yes. their reign. Yes. And um, following on from that that garb story is going to festival and the Mortonvale unit coming up because when Bran did reign he grew this moustache fuck off moustache 
beautiful. But the Morden Vale troops did something. <laughs> so, yeah, I um, wouldn't say it was all of Morden Vale. I, I, think, I think some of the ladies didn't. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, there were, there were matching mustaches. They may not have grown them, but they, <laughs> they did somehow manage to appear to have these very large black. <laughs> luscious mustaches when they when they marched off to war and also i believe there are a lot of them that appeared at the fighter auction tourney more than well people with their their wonderful mustache yes on the stuck on the outside of the helm it did look yes. impressive. Yeah. 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 well you have to be able to see it <laughs> <laughs> just that glorious it had to come out yeah <laughs> i think they were um yeah the, black fur or some kind yeah, yeah. black faux fur yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i was i was trolling through the photos to, to find some to put up for the event for this interview and i came across one i think was from ori's pelicaning maybe um where you were both dressed up to what appeared to be smurfs yeah what's that about <laughs> um once again it was to support um Ori in his period and that was actually from the period that Ori was 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 dressing in that time and being a little short fat fellow with a beard wearing blue and red I'm always going to look like a young I don't, smurf I don't know if I've ever fessed up to you to Gilchrist but it was kind of um Ori's partner Helvig's idea who mm. was making those little hats at the time and discovered that they kind of looked like Smurf hats yep. and said if she made a, a red one could I somehow manage to get to get Gilchrist to turn up in in blue and white was it blue and white yeah yeah so yeah then we we're like okay well I'll have to wear the blue and the yeah so yeah but it was definitely that that cheeky little idea definitely came from Ari's partner <laughs> And given I was um, um, Ori's pal, any way I could support him in whatever way he needed, I, of course, was there for to do. To do. Oh, you're such a thoughtful and considerate man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is well, I like him. Harvick <laughs> <laughs> definitely uh, has a way of, like, coming up with crazy ideas and then just putting them in people's heads and then they're the ones that go off and kind of do all yep. of the, the madness and she's in there chuckling away. I don't realise them. They generally don't realise they've kind of been tricked into something. Yeah. <laughs> she's, good at, she's good at loading bullets for other people. <laughs> Always in a caring and considerate way. Once again, she's also a truly awesome human being. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Very much so. I know Lil and I have a, a bit of a story about Blueberry Smurfs. <laughs> <laughs> Blueberry vodka cruises and ice cream. Sounds really weird. Tastes really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but if you put the ice cream just on top, it kind of looks like a Smurf. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. Like more than more. Yes. I um, discovered that the, 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 the van, the coffee van they had at the time, if you took your bourbon and Coke, up to the coffee van, they would put a scoop of ice cream in it for you. Oh. And um, it was really quite a nice thing. Like everyone looked at me weird, but then they tried it. And yeah, I believe yeah. Candice B, myself, and Lorcan yes. went, oh, there's ice cream in the kitchen. So we ran up and all we had was blue cruises. So I have, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah that, that was yes, it. Yes, pride is exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Drinking Smurfs at an event became a little bit of a, a thing for us. <laughs> so um, you guys have obviously spent a lot of time um, in the Lock Ark admin and it's B&B with the, the more cultural in-game side of things. What are some of the Lock Ark traditions that you both enjoy? The inclusivity of, of, of the kingdom, having done a fair bit of research into the rest of the known world, I think Lockhart as a whole 
is a far more cohesive work together group. Um, and which is possibly why Lockhart has more pelicans per head of population, I think, than any other kingdom. <laughs> um, it is that I think we work together well. Um, and we seem to enjoy each other's company as a general rule. Um, so, yeah, that's. Well, the fact that I've been here for 36 years <laughs> says that I must like the SCA a little bit. <laughs> yeah. um, How about you, Lillian? Oh, if you've got more, feel free to tell us. I, I also like the fact that we're a daughter kingdom of the West. Um, so many of our traditions harken back to when we were a principality of the West, or for those of us who are even older, a crown principality of the West. Um, and I, I, I like our link to the oldest kingdom in the SCA. Um, I also have what I refer to as my Western moments. I was at an event where there was a North American herald, and she paused between the line, newest armager of Lockhart, and in my head, I put the West. <laughs> and then at another event, um, a Modern Vale event, we had a whole bunch of banners which of other kingdoms which we'd got made for the first crowned tawny feast. And I, ran, I handed a box to a random person, and that random person just happened to put the arms of the West directly above the arms of Lockhart. And I've walked into the hall, looked at it, gone, yep, that's right, moved on. Luckily, um, Gui, or King Eli as he is now, got there before Berengar and Bethan, who were the crown at the event, and very quietly, in his awesome way, pointed out perhaps that might be deemed wrong. So that was changed before they got there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you get get used to the things that you're introduced to and hear a lot of, and that kind of becomes what it is in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, I think we're lucky that because we're not just West, we're K. Yeah. We, we've got two two sections there of traditions, so that they're, some of their traditions are very different, and incorporating them sort of became interesting. Certainly being a visitor to Canterbury Fair, you learnt some of the, the you learnt that there was differences like growing up in Lockhart, I only knew <laughs> I only knew of our 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 things. I'd never been overseas. And yeah, discovering that some things were done completely differently and thoughts on things were completely different. And some of them I think we really should have taken on like I learned in learning, learning at Canning Fair, I learned in the Crescent Isles that there was a thing called stupid peer tricks. And if you're a peer, you should have a trick, a stupid peer trick. If you're a double peer, you should have two, triple peer, oh. three. For every period you've got, you should have a peer trick. No, I, I want to point out it was Master Servant Harley who came up with this concept, very well assisted by Sir Callum. He tells me that it's a KE thing, and I'm as far as I'm aware it may be a KE thing, but yeah, I did learn about it through him, and I also know that he can play the tin whistle out of each nostril. <laughs> That's definitely a talent. <laughs> a double peer is paying out of one nostril the one trick, and then the other nostril is the second trick. Yeah, because he has, no, you've got to have two different. He has a second oh, one, which he is has he a second can one. turn his hand into a wind-up spider. Mm. Okay. It really has to be seen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what are your peer tricks then? Have you adopted this tradition? We don't have to have any because we don't have it over here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, see, I think <laughs> I know Lilia, Lil's peer trick is, you know, being Lil. And I get my hair stuck in a bold rake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's special. Uh, yes. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. So, uh, and Gilchrist, you're one of the co stewards of Canterbury Fair this year as well. Next yes, year. Yes. Yep. Yep. Hopefully, yeah. we'll be able to attend the event. <laughs> <laughs> we have booked. <laughs> Um, but um, one of the other members of, the, of our stewarding team, um, Rashad, former Baron of, of Southern Guard, contacted me some months ago and said, hey, do you want to do this? You want to... Yeah, why not? <laughs> at, at some point when the world becomes a little more stable, I'd also intend putting my hand up um, to run festival. Um, because hell, you can't... Um, you can't uh, do too many things, can you? <laughs> and and it's, one thing, it's one thing I haven't done. And uh, that's a rare thing for you, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Well, no. <laughs> There's been some offices I haven't held. I've never been arts and sciences, and I've never been a marshal. Wow. Pretty much every other of the greater offices of, the, of, of a group I have done that. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll keep um, you in mind next time one comes up, hey? Yeah. <laughs> I just um, <clears throat> there's a there's a comment from from Dallin <laughs> about the uh, the A4 size membership cards. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it that. has happened. Um, Dallin did get an A4 size membership card, but. <laughs> Not necessarily going to become a standard thing. It's just that I knew his his eyes were getting, you know, as, <laughs> as he gets older, he might have needed something a little larger to look at. Yeah. But but I also did balance that out by giving um, Her Excellency of Morden Vale one about the size of a postage stamp. <laughs> <laughs> so you might need to speak to lists so that Dallin can get his fighter of fighter authorization in the same size that a4 yeah. what a good idea <laughs> yeah. i felt challenged by lists recently because um <clears throat> teltu was um putting seals on the back of her back seals on the back of her envelopes that she was sending um fighter registration cards out to wow. so yes um i've tried to hand bake and i'm sort of in the process and i'm, I'm almost perfected a, a wax seal of a seal so. A seal, seal. I was challenged. Seal. I had to do something. A seal, seal. Yeah. We knew you'd appreciate that, Penny. England. We knew you would. I, I have it. I, I made it out of wood. Unfortunately, I had to seal my seal, seal. And it didn't seal very well. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like my stickers. I'm very happy with the stickers on the back of the envelope. Thank you. Yeah, they are a lot of fun. <laughs> Moving on to something else <laughs> with less Sorry. fun. Right? There's, a, there's a couple of questions that we ask uh, all of our, um, our people, and that is uh, a story of your, one of your favourite moments in the SCA. I know there's, there may be some quiet time as you think back through Gilchrist. One of my favourite times was the first um, festival at Yes. The only festival where we're actually allowed to have fires. <laughs> <laughs> and because... I'm an early riser, looking out over the valley because where Mordenvale was camped, we were effectively above most of the other groups and seeing the campfires gave a very um, more medieval look if you didn't look too closely at the, um, <laughs> at the nylon tents. Um, and another one was one of the, I think it was the first festival at, um, Glenworth Valley. Blaney, who did the campsite allocation for that event, put the combined colleges beside Abbotsford. 
Now, you could say that was probably a nasty thing to do, but the way I looked at it, because generally I'm a nice person, is I looked at it and I had a discussion with them about how it was aspirational. This is what you can, if you want, if this is the way you want to go, this is how you far you can take it. Because the Abbotsford campsite is obviously awesome. <laughs> um, so it's things like that where I've used the term earlier, social engineering. I love social engineering. <laughs> and if it's used for good, it's a magnificent thing. Um, I like to think most of the time I have used it for good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are times when the cranky arg does appear <laughs> and that's never pleasant I don't like him <laughs> yeah I understand how about yourself Lillian I, I don't know that I've got a favourite I've got I, I guess people in general would always be part of what I would call mm. favourite moments. So generally time I've spent with certain people, so many, I guess, um, His Excellency Ulf, previous Baron of Orden Bale, stands out. Um, I've spent so many wonderful nights drunk off my nut with Ulf. <laughs> <laughs> and so many wonderful nights around Morden Vale campfires with him and just laughing till our sides split there's so many little things that have happened over the years that stuck with us particularly oh my brother angus and i when whenever we get around a campfire we bring up all the memories of things that that have happened that we were there for that we're still thoroughly amused by um, so yeah i can give an example of one and go that's kind of not my favourite memory, but it's what my favourite memories are made of. We were sitting around the fire once and um, some visitors came over. One of them was called Crowbar. I don't know if anyone knows Crowbar, but um, it was an unusual name. And they asked, could they use our fire to, to cook some sausages? And we didn't mind. Of course you can use our fire to cook some sausages. And during the cooking of these sausages, one of them had fallen off into the fire. And so Crowbar picked it up walked over to the grass and this is at um Glenworth yeah. Valley so a horse and it farm. was a horse farm and there was a lot of dirt around the area and started rolling the sausage in the grass and we were quite intrigued by it and questioned what he was doing it and he said he was rolling it in the grass to get the grit off and that sort of coined a phrase amongst more than well after that about rolling something in the dirt to get the grit off <laughs> In particular, the next day at the fighter auction, Tawny, um, Morden Vale may have pulled together to buy the two people that were um, part of that so that we could dress them unusually. And every single time a Morden Vale fighter fought one of them and beat them, they roll them in the grass to get the dirt <laughs> off. <laughs> and they're, they're my moments, moments like that that, that create... A history, something that sticks with you forever, that, that, you know, just keeps you constantly amused. The same campfire, there's a um, Bart, who a lot of people know now, he's, um, they would have heard him play in the tavern so many times, he's wonderful and he's fantastic. And the very first time we met him, he was quite young and not so experienced and sat down next to all but the yes. fire and said wolf was talking about musical instruments and things like that and he turned to wolf and said i've got a guitar and wolf went really what kind and he went a wooden one <laughs> <laughs> and that that stuck with us <laughs> That stuck with us for quite some time. So yeah, they're my memories. They're those, I guess, um, chits and giggles are always one of my favourite things. Yeah. I gotta say, like, you can always guarantee you're gonna have a good time if you head over to Mortonvale. Like, Mortonvale is always so welcoming, and there's always something fun and silly, and like, just you know, you don't take yourselves too seriously, but you also, you know, respect the the serious sides of the SCA. 
Um, it's just a yeah, it's a really comfortable place to be. Um, I I wholeheartedly agree. I I'm not from Morden Vale as you are England, but I've definitely had a lot to do with Morden Vale um, for more than twenty years, and I remember uh, back in the the mid to late nineties, traveling not only to Spring War, but going down for random events because we could drive from Brisbane to Newcastle and back just for those weekend events. And honestly, Tokal is still one of my favorite events to go to. And hopefully we'll be on next year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hopefully. And thank you. That's probably, probably brought up one of my most favorite memories is Tokal and um, waiting till the wonderful, honorable air was really, really, really hung over one morning. <laughs> and Rurik and I were often a team, not necessarily a good team, but yeah, we, Girl Chris used to say if we giggle for more than three seconds, we're not allowed to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and we giggle for a lot more than three seconds when we discovered <laughs> the uh, pipe band, the yeah, there bad was a, pipe. There was a fun run on this game on the band. Sunday morning. And we thought, now, wouldn't it be funny if we get one of those guys playing a bad pipe and bring him up and get him to play outside Aya's room? And we went and asked them, and they thought it was good for a joke. <laughs> but wanted to know why we only wanted one and we didn't want the whole <laughs> lot of them. And so they marched down the hallway and stopped with the centre of them at Aya's door as they played their bagpipes. Everyone was coming out of their rooms. It's not that. <laughs> we did have to bash on the door and um, a very concerned and sleepy looking Aya just sort of looked at the band and shut the door because she didn't know who was responsible because Rurik and I had done the runner by then. <laughs> <laughs> Sure but what was fun? We did repeat the incident the next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. I suppose, I suppose my other favourite thing of the SCA art is like, as we all said, is the people. The people that I've met from pretty much every group um, that we have and have made quite strong friendships with is, is a big part of why. I'm still playing in the SCA because there are some YouTubing fine examples of great people that my life is more full having you guys in it. People like Bart and Catherine from from Southern Guard, um, Nathan and Catherine from Anyala. So there's two the two extremes of the kingdom um, are really big reasons why I'm still here. He just got a thing for Catherine's. Could be. <laughs> there are a lot of Catherines in, in Locker, I've got to say. There certainly are. <laughs> yes. um, but no, it, it, it is a very people group of people, yes. this, this organisation. Um, obviously, being all volunteers, um, one of the best lines I ever had on Pack Down Day at Spring War, I think I was, rough, I was running my third in a row. Um, one new guy asked me, so, so how much do you get paid to do this? Um, nah, nothing. It generally costs me money to run an event like this. <laughs> so why do you do it? Because someone has to, and I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, I have to say that is absolutely the one most consistent thing. And I think for Anglin and I as well, it's the people. The people really do keep you here and it's the the main reason that we do go and research crazy things dress up in funny clothes go and hit each other and and go drinking because of all of those people and the the different walks of life i know that i definitely would not have made as many friends as i have without mm. this i wouldn't have any and I know a lot of people thanks to the SCA and I actually like some of them. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, really Marina, happy to hear you like, say hey. that. I remember I like you know, not, 
not yeah, not so long ago, you didn't like any of them. Any of the SCA or any of the people? Or people in general. I still don't like people, but, you know, you're supposed to pretend it. <laughs> Ilkus, on the other hand, um, has had many friends in the SCA. Like, he's actually got three wives. Yes, he does. Um, I do. He <laughs> was on, when he was on the board, um, Christiana and him spent so much time together and um, she became quite his wife because if he wasn't with me, he was with her. And the way, you know, your partner would tell you to do something and you just instantly do it, <laughs> that happened between them, you know. Christiana would go, book a spot, and he'd go, yes, yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm simple. I'm yeah. scared of that woman. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> Love her deal. Yeah. The, the interaction they had was just, yeah, we, we started to decide, decided that she was she was his wife and, and people had asked us and it's like, well, I wasn't. I was his girlfriend. <laughs> she was his wife. <laughs> and then at one um, Canterbury Fair, um, Catherine, as you mentioned before, Catherine, Catherine Dark. Dark. Catherine Dark. Um, they spent a lot of time together at Candy Fair because like-minded people and Catherine had decided that it was probably time to retire and put her arm through Gilchrist's elbow and went, let's go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and she had really meant let's go up and go to bed. Whereas a lot of people at Canterbury Fair who didn't know the two had this like friendship have looked at me and looked at them and looked at me and looked at them and I've gone, what? I don't care. His wife, and he <laughs> so yeah, she became another wife, and then um, Lilia, Lil, at a birthday party, um, here, Gilchrist and, and Lil were talking, very very close together and having having a conversation, and, and we're the, both tactile people. <laughs> their hands and the the feelings they have for it, like the the friendship they have for each other was just so showing on their face like the, the comfort the the closeness and um the bartender at the event walked over and 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 walked up to them and went so how long have you guys been married <laughs> <laughs> so yeah she she also became his wife so yes we, we we do say that he has three wives in the sca and and one girlfriend yeah <laughs> You could always write a story, The Three Wives of Gilchrist. <laughs> the Three Wives and Girlfriend of Gilchrist. And the Girlfriend. <laughs> and all four of them are truly wonderful people. Yes. Yeah, they absolutely yeah. are. <laughs> Shit scared of all four of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a sensible man. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we're at our time limit. It has been so such an awesome interview and chat. And just yeah. to, to catch up with you guys again, I know I miss you dearly. It's been way too yeah. long. It's It's been an odd couple of years. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. It, it looks like we've woken Frankie up now, so, yeah. <laughs> Before we head no, up, no, no, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for including us in this. It, it, it's been a pleasure to do it. Um, been lots of fun. My cheeks hurt from laughing so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so next week, I think there's an interview with Duke Fabian um, from the West. So that should be really interesting. I think it's on Saturday. So join us for that. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for, for tuning in tonight and, um, laughing along and I'm sure that uh, there'll be plenty more questions and wanting to hear all the new all the stories that were untold tonight <laughs> I had to throw money many 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 so back when you used to wear an onion on your belt I was into the stories <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely track down a Lil at the morning about campfire to hear all the all the goss yes <laughs> yes <laughs> well thank you very much Thank Thanks you. for having us. Thank you. Good night, everyone.